most tragic fires usually have a tragic ending. That's why it's tragic. This wasn't a tragic fire in the sense that because nobody got hurt, uh, but Robert Cardi ruined a good building and changed our lives in a very unique uh, and unforgettable way. The fire broke out shortly after 8.30 at the Lincoln Memorial Elementary School when apparently a custodian and a teacher detected smoke in the east end of the school gymnasium. Robert went to work at 7. There was nobody in the building with him for probably 30 minutes or so. He could have burnt it to the ground, but he was trying to redeem himself. And so the way to do that was to save everybody. So it was September 10th, 1980. Well, I had just started first grade. And I remember it was a, a sunny day. Uh, I was in the fourth grade. The school year had just begun in September. And we began our day in the fourth grade with either PE class or music class. So I had fourth grade in the gym. Which rotated every other day. So my day was music. And uh, I could hear these little popping noises. I saw flames come out of the janitor's room and all, that's all I saw. And so I could see this glow on the wall over there. At the south end of the gymnasium on the east side, fire shot, immediately shot out of the door. So I turn to see what's going on there. Well, now he's running down the gym floor towards me and he tells me there's a fire. So he's going to go pull the fire alarm is what he says. First thing in the morning, this right after 830. So as soon as I step my foot on the uh, stairs going up to this modular unit for our music class was when the fire alarm went off. And then they told us to come outside. Were you scared? Yeah. The fire was that uh, reported that uh, between nine and nine thirty, when we arrived at the scene, we could I could see it was going to be a, a major battle, and uh, we fought it all day long. In less than a minute, four hundred seventy-one students here were evacuated, and it was only a few short days before that they had practiced a fire drill. And Robin Robin Rolls was. Uh, very instrumental in getting those kids out. They got them to the park. You know, as we turn and we see this black smoke coming out of the school, it's like, oh, it's not a drill, our school is burning. The gymnasium is surrounded by classrooms. And we were standing on top of the classrooms. And I asked both custodians to make sure that those, uh, that the fire didn't encroach in under us and Robert Cardi was uh, very accommodating. It was the quick thinking of the custodian that managed to salvage the rest of the school because he was able to close the fire doors. As it stands now, the gym was the only thing completely destroyed. It went like a torch. Caney's uh, intake at that time uh, for a day was about 350,000 gallons, and we pumped about 500,000 gallons of water. So uh, everything was temporary. I taught outside for a year and a half. We ate lunch at the Catholic Hall across the street. Our music class was a rolling piano up and down the hallway. It changed things for a little while, but it didn't take long for everything to get back to normal. The Caney Fire Chief said he would order a state fire marshal to investigate this fire here at the Caney grade school. When we met with the fire marshal, it was pretty intense. They found out that uh, he was the perpetrator. I mean, you know, he set the chapel on fire after he got in prison. And, um, you know, he set the fire in Coffeyville, which they didn't even know he had done that till our fire. Meanwhile, they said they were lucky that the fire was contained mainly to the gym and hoped to resume classes on Monday. No, that's the biggest fire. We've seen some big fires, but not that big. And it, it was so big because it involved so many children. You're impressionable as a little kid. We had no counseling back then. Greenbush didn't come in and have counselors. It was a different era. There are scenarios that have gone through my mind. If I had started class and you know, you got 25 kids in there screaming and yelling, we would not have heard the popping noises. Um, and, and it went quick. It, it could have been a whole different scenario. When we get together every 10 years or so 
and we talk about the fire, uh, we know what we're talking about. We saw it firsthand. And uh, my classmates were the ones that witnessed it, smelled it, sensed it, he heard it, and it's all deeply ingrained in, uh, in our experiences in Caney. Well, every September 10th, it pops up on Facebook. <laughs> A friend of mine, I posted it, you know, the other day, and she goes, well, I try to forget about it, but everybody brings it up every year. <laughs> I was like, sorry. <laughs> we had a teacher uh, in Caney who also was a part-time photographer for the school. He did pictures for the yearbook and for the local newspaper. Uh, Joe Warnock was his name, and uh, he took numerous photographs of the fire because uh, he saw that this was a moment that needed to be uh, chronicled on, on film. So when we came back uh, from school, from our break, and returned to our classrooms, I remember the bulletin board in the hallway had all these five by seven photographs, black and white, of the fire. And he was selling them. The school was selling these five by seven pictures, so to speak, as souvenirs uh, of this experience. Um, different time back then, 1980, we didn't have all the psychology training that we do today, but certainly kids came away with, from the fire with these five by seven black and white pictures that to this day is our lone record of what happened. Uh, we didn't have video cameras, we didn't have cell phone cameras. Um, everything that most of that event was first experienced through Joe Warnock's camera and uh, I'm very blessed to still have a few of those pictures still in my possession today because that's the only thing that we have to, ex to truly show uh, the ferocity and the enormity of this fire. He took some great photographs that showed the flames and smoke coming out. And of course, those photographs were used to eventually convict the janitor who set fire to this building. <laughs> 